From royals to billionaires over film and pop stars and socialites, our fascination for the rich and famous seems insatiable. From paparazzi to reality TV, the media have understood this probably better than anybody else. We want news about the rich and famous, especially if the news is juicy and shocking. And on my side of the bed, um, was human fecal matter. Some people have argued that celebrity gossip is something recent, a new phenomenon due to mass media. The argument goes that because we hear so much about these celebrities, we start feeling close to them and our brain hasn't adapted yet to these mass media. And so it doesn't make the distinction between people we really know and people we know through media. Yeah, that argument doesn't hold. Celebrity gossip is not, by any means, something recent. The oldest story known to mankind, the Epic of Gilgamesh, is basically celebrity gossip about a Mesopotamian king. In ancient Greece and Rome, everybody knew the stories about gods and heroes and how they misbehaved, had affairs, were lying, stealing, throwing tantrums, basically, starting wars and so on. They were the celebrities of their time. Or what about the Middle Ages and the minstrels who went from castle to castle singing poems about love and betrayal, kings and heroes and basically spreading celebrity gossip? In today's world, high-status individuals, also known as the rich and famous, are like the gods from ancient Greece and Rome, the kings and knights from the Middle Ages. And these stories, this gossip, serves a purpose. And what follows is the secret to the unending popularity of celebrity gossip. There's several conversations. There's a about conversation it. with you, with Harry, about how dark your baby is going to be, potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Part of being social beings means we identify ourselves with others. We project ourselves and are able to feel what others feel. It's called empathy. In our brain, neuroscientists have identified particular neurons, which they called mirror neurons, because they are the reasons we mirror others and feel what we see others experience. For example, when we watch someone getting hurt, we usually cringe. As the mirror neurons in our brain makes us simulate a vanilla version of that experience for ourselves. Now, when you apply this to celebrities, things can get interesting in various ways. Oh, wow! Wow! First, when we learn about the work and achievement of someone, we create an image of that person. That image is, by definition, incomplete. We don't know the person personally, right? So, there is a lot of information missing. And our brains have this nasty habit of filling in the blanks. We start projecting upon them all kinds of stuff that can be good stuff or bad stuff. In some cases, we can project our own deepest hopes and frustrations, so the other becomes some kind of a perfect image of what we will never become. And so we start idealizing and obsessing about this person. Can I lick Daniel Radcliffe's eyebrows and body assortments? Because she started with the eyebrows, I feel like by the other assortments she means the rest of my hair, which is great, thank you. I've always been very, very self-conscious about my, my crazy eyebrows, so it's, it's, it's nice to know that they're, they're going down well out there. Congratulations, that's how fans are made. It's a simple but very potent overcompensation mechanism. These people will want to know everything there is to know about their hero, hence their avid consumption of celebrity news. And they will defend their idol through everything. Because anything hurting the idol is a direct attack to their own ideal self. And that's just not acceptable. Die hard fans. Britney Spears is finally free. It's a day that she and her fans thought might never come. Shocked, stunned, Amazing. relieved. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best news that could have came out of today. But those are a minority. For all the others out there, something else is at hand. You see, we project on others all the time. We compare ourselves to them. And with celebrities, the rich and famous, that's a problem. You have to understand, it's, it's quite threatening to our ego to compare ourselves to people who have become extremely successful, who are leading a seemingly perfect life. A normal reaction to that comparison is to ask yourself, 
Why them and not me? Why couldn't I become like that? Why isn't my life more successful? Now, most of the time, this is not a conscious line of reasoning, but it's there. And you can see how this can quickly get out of hand and cause some serious anxiety and depression. You see, when the rich and famous hit a roadblock, when they have problems, their aura of perfection, of leading a perfect life gets some serious cracks. Suddenly their life isn't as attractive anymore. You wouldn't want to be in their shoes anymore and because of it, balance in the universe, or at least in our own internal psychological universe, well, that balance gets restored. Well, welcome back. We continue to follow this breaking news. Accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Sources say the when they do horrible things, it makes us feel better about ourselves. Because it means, you see, they are no better than us. It's less threatening if they have flaws, if they are weird, if they are unhappy. I'm less a failure if they are not perfect. My not-so-perfect marriage is still better than their divorce where they lose half of everything they own. My partner may not be as sexy, but at least he or she isn't cheating on me like them. I didn't become a famous actor, but at least I didn't have to sleep with Harvey Weinstein. Not that they all did, of course. These artists have so much talent, but they take drugs and end up with an overdose. These business millionaires make so much money, but have you heard how they treat their employees? They have no heart. But you see the pattern, right? We basically find ourselves the perfect excuse to convince ourselves we don't want their glamorous life. We convince ourselves that despite our shitty jobs and too much debt and imperfect bodies, despite all the frustrations and lost battles, despite all that, we'd rather have our own life because look, the rich and famous, they're not better off. Money and fame don't buy happiness. That's why we're so fascinated with these modern semi-gods. Each time one fails, it's just more proof that we're not doing so bad. Because if they don't fail, it means we did. That, or we're just curious. <laughs> just curious. This week I'm giving away 10 copies of my flagship course, Master Your Brain. There's a whole section on the compensation mechanism, probably one of the most fascinating topics related to human behavior. Anyway, if you want a chance to win your copy, do the next three things. One, like this video. Two, leave a comment below about your favorite celebrity scam. Three, follow the link in the description. Leave your name and email so I know where to send you the free link. And next week I'll announce the winners. And if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. You join our 400,000 students and start using your brain. Sharpen your mind. Brain out.